Good evening, everybody. This is just going to be another short one here, but I think it's especially with all the recent news that's been coming out. I'm just going to let y'all have a quick listen here. Something interesting that was posted back in uh, just back this last September. But again, I think it has a lot of relevance. Good evening, everybody. Hey, this is going to be just another short one here. Uh, Cindy, Casey, people want to know, does child sex trafficking happen here in our community? Well, the short answer is yes, it happens everywhere. But with trafficking, it's a lot more than meets the eye, and it's much more than what you see on social media and in the movies. It is a huge problem. It's like any other violent crime. The thing is, this isn't uh, obvious all the time. Trafficking of children is a sneaky crime. You may not even realize it happens in the Tri-Cities. That's because it flies under the radar most of the time. I'd say that it happens here just as much. It just looks a little bit different. Grow Free Tennessee advocates for trafficking survivors right here in Northeast Tennessee. They argue that you'll find child sex trafficking anywhere there are vulnerabilities. In more rural areas, and especially in East Tennessee, we see a lot of familial trafficking. Um, in disadvantaged areas, um, areas that there's a lot of um, drug addiction, poverty. That means the most common way for children to be trafficked in Tennessee isn't through abduction or kidnapping. In fact, for the overwhelming majority, it starts in the home or with someone they trust. Movie style, I guess, uh, abduction, that, that's a extremely small percent of what we see. Uh, does it happen? Yes. Right, but that, that's not usually our main, um, main issue. The TBI looked into over 100 human trafficking incidents in 2019. They received over 700 tips to their hotline last year, and for 2020 so far, they've already received nearly 600. Some of the red flags, uh, you can have a person or a child that's unusually fearful or anxious or submissive. They're obviously being monitored or controlled or almost guarded by someone else. Child sex trafficking is defined as soliciting a minor for sex, but there has to be a commercial gain, meaning money is being made off the child. In Tennessee, human trafficking is the second fastest growing criminal industry right behind drug trafficking. Across the country, every two minutes, child is bought or sold for sex. If they have some kind of vulnerability that a trafficker is able to take advantage of, they can very easily fall into that life. Grow Free Tennessee says with a lot of misinformation and conspiracy about child trafficking spreading online, the focus needs to shift to the real problem. Because you'll never be able to stop it if you don't know what you're actually looking for. 
Now, just for this year alone, only 2020, that organization, Grow Free Tennessee, has already had more than 130 human trafficking referrals here in East Tennessee. We're going to have much more information for you in our full story on WJHL.com, listing some of those red flags that you can look for to help be an advocate in our community for children who need a voice. Sydney Casey. Ashley, thank you so much. So much valuable information there. We will be checking in with Ashley later on in the show. Interesting to say the least, I would say. Vegas and Bama's second fastest growing criminal industry. Let that sink in. Hello, Scott, an all tough subject. Carla, call me. It is, but it needs to be talked about. It really does. CSI crowdsource elimination. Scott, thanks for showing this. Absolutely. It's the point of this channel. Protect our children. Yes. There you go, Kelly. Thank you so much. There's a YouTube state summer kept saying that she did not feel good after playing in the water that day. What if the water had a contaminant in it that is har harmful to humans? Uh, well, Marie Daniels, I'm 51 years old and I've been swimming in that uh, body of water since I was probably younger than summer. So there are some contamination in in there but uh you know it's supposed to be kept uh, kept checked by the tva and twra tennessee valley authority and tennessee wildlife resources agency and other sources uh, to make sure that the levels do not go above what's safe to be swam in for bodily contact or fish consumption or whatever, uh, that particular body of water is a Tennessee state park. So it has a whole lot of traffic, a whole lot of people that boat, jet ski, uh, lay out in the sun, take their kids there, uh, do the paddle boards, kayaking, canoeing, uh, multiple, multiple things. Uh, you know, and we've never heard of anybody dying unless there's a drowning, but nobody ever from, you know, any kind of chemical exposure or bacterial or bi uh, biological uh, contamination, anything like that. Anita Salyer, trafficking has been going on for many, many, many years. It's one of the reasons I put this video up there, Anita. You don't get to be the second largest criminal industry overnight. Thank you, LJ. Human trafficking hotline. My ex-husband's family has been essaying their children for generations in New Orleans. I got my babies away from them all when I found out. That was a good move there, Vegas and Bama. Angel B, there, they are back. Go to Duty Ron's channel. He is a big supporter of that volunteer organization, Equisearch. Yes, they are supposed to be wrapping up uh, this evening. Uh I can't elaborate any more than that. We'll just wait for Dave Rader to come on to Duty Ron show and go with it that way. Um, you know, folks, we need to we need to really and I know I know the people that are in here. I know you all are you know pay attention to this and your hearts are are uh, you know set on finding summer 
and uh, all kids for that matter. Uh, but the reason that I wanted to, you know, play that certain uh, clip there from WJHL, our local news station, was just to remind everybody or bring to the forefront to everybody that are new in this case. Uh, I've seen a lot of people lately uh, in Discord and the different chats and YouTubes that are coming into this brand new. And uh, if any of you could imagine coming into the Summer Wells case that started on June 15th, and trying to understand the Summer Wells case, it's going to be very confusing. Uh, so I, I was thinking, you know, like the little clip I dropped earlier today, you know, to kind of help some people uh, understand that. Missy G, I see that question. I'm going to go ahead and answer that uh, because I get asked that a lot. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to bring any sort of everybody is entitled to their own beliefs. Uh, and that's okay because we don't discuss that on this channel. But since I do get asked that a lot, that symbol is, uh, it's a Hindu symbol for Om. A lot of people use Om in a mantra during meditation practices. The meaning behind Om is samadhi catlin exactly been twice and if you ever reach samadhi once then at least for me and my experience i have never looked at the world or people the same since but om is a symbol for the ultimate reality and why i'm so attached to that symbol is I listened to a Swami that told a story. I don't ascribe to any particular uh, indoctrination, denomination, dogma, propaganda, any of that sort of thing. Uh, no belief system. If I did, it would most closely align with a branch of Hinduism called Advaita Vedanta. And that is a non-dual belief system. And there is a Sanskrit saying that is taught Twam Asi. That means that thou art. You are that. Which means you are the ultimate reality. There is no separation between you or the others. When people bow their heads towards each other and say namaste, namaste in Sanskrit, the meaning for that is the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. Recognizes and acknowledges the divine in you. Because we see divinity in each thing in this creation. But back to this Swami, he told a story about Om was the sound that was made when the universe was created. And it was just such a beautiful story. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I just, uh, it is a conversation starter. Uh, but I don't talk about it because one of the major rules of Hinduism, like I said, you know, I don't ascribe to Hinduism. If I did, it would be Advaita Vedanta. And one of the practices of that is there is no evangelism. We don't preach. We don't convert. We don't do anything. But if somebody asks about our world outlook, our views or whatever, then we definitely will share it with it. But to evangelize or try to convert someone or tell them they need to find this prophet or this person and this person's their savior, or that person's their savior 
or if you do this, you're going to go to hell. And if you do this, you're going to go to heaven. Uh, we consider that as actually a mild form of violence because you're trying to push a belief system on them that may go directly against the belief system that they already hold. And Hinduism believes that all belief systems should be accepted just like all people should be accepted. So that's a brief discussion of Om and what my avatar is and why I have my avatar. Because those things that I've just, uh, just described to you as I try to live my life uh, based like that. Uh, I've been a study of religious and spiritual philosophy for 25 years. Uh, uh, amateur psychology. I've done some online coursework in criminal psychology. Uh, different philosophies especially when you get into religions and you know whether this may or may not uh probably i don't know whether here or on true crime commentary we'll be doing something because there are some pretty strong day uh, ties with the seventh day adventist church in the church of latter-day saints here in tennessee and utah which ties directly back to the wells family uh, so we may get into that discussion there and <clears throat> see the involvement. Uh, and if you look at those particular, uh, religions and stuff and their philosophies and how, how that's put into comparison with the Eastern philosophies, and some of the Western philosophies and the differences between those, that will probably be something that I would discuss on this channel uh, because, you know, this channel's name is Scott H. Has Thoughts. And I think a lot of, about a lot of stuff. Uh, but there's a lot of ties, you know, and you start th seeing things about, well, what I was going to say about religion, religion and, and people that are so indoctrinated by belief systems, it's not so much whether you believe it. You've got to worry because they believe it. Now think about that. Think about that. It doesn't matter whether I believe in what the jihadists over in the Middle East are doing and why they're doing it. But they believe it. So it has nothing to do on whether I believe in their practices and why they do the things that they do. But I have to acknowledge that they believe it and that's their reasoning behind what they can do or else I can never understand why they do that they do what they do and that's the core of why i've studied uh religious philosophy and spirit spiritual philosophy for so long and psychology is because it's fascinating to see why people do the things that they do and what's driving them to do it and a lot of times in certain cases you find out that the church or religion is behind that and we have to look at that again because it may not be something that we believe it may not be we may not believe that the true sabbath is on saturday but dawn does we may not believe that you the latter day uh seven day events believe that you go to sleep until uh I think the Savior comes back and you have the resurrection and then everybody wakes up however that is, you know. Do I believe that? No. Don does. And that's what we've got to look at. 
So, uh, you know, when we, uh, when we start looking at things from, from different angles and <clears throat> other things will start to make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Take a fair minded approach and realize that you don't, a lot of things that are, that happen in this world are based off of what people believe. So you have to look at it from a psychological point of view, and especially in these cases, criminal psychology. What drives them from that angle as far as their religious background, if they have any, what's driving them for that from that angle, and how those two intermesh and is projected out through their life. Indiana K. Scott, I was raised Catholic, but no longer participate in that religion, but I respect everyone's beliefs. There you go, Indiana K. I hear a lot of people from Catholicism, they say they're recovering Catholics. Should Kelly should or can we believe there may be more Donald Wells? I can say this on this channel because it's Scott H has thoughts. Uh, yes. Yes, I would say so, Kelly. I'm comfortable saying that. Monica caught. So what is Scott's religion now? Um, I don't have one. I don't have one. And you've got to remember not believing in something is also a belief system. So that's kind of strange and paradoxical in itself. But like I said, it, if I were to subscribe to it, it would most closely align to uh, the Vedonic roots of Hinduism. And what, me, what led me to that was arguably the Rig Veda is the o oldest quote-unquote religious spiritual text that there is. And some people, you can arguably date it back to 8,000 BC because I wanted to find out what the first people that gathered and formed societies on this rock hurtling through space, what they were thinking. So I went back to the oldest that I could find and Sanskrit is the oldest written language and the Rig Veda was written in Sanskrit. So can't go any farther back than that. There's just no historical record of it. And then I started to see how there were vast differences and how those belief systems began to get corrupted over time and where the different branches branched off why they branched off why others held different beliefs than each of other did and then the grouping of those people and then those people going to fight going to war over their beliefs when their beliefs told them to do a completely different thing and uh you have to really start thinking about that, you know. There's been more human death on the planet Earth since the beginning of time caused by Christians than all the other religions combined. Now, why would that be? Well, you know, I have thoughts. Why is that? Kelly Fustos infiltrated, agree, corrupted. Seems like everything has been corrupted. 
That good question. Let's see. Bambi apparently had a good question. Let me scroll up and see if I can find. Bambi, do you think police are involved? I'm going to leave that where that is right there. Uh, if you watch over on True Crime Commentary, Bambi, if you're not a subscriber over there, I would recommend it, not because I'm part of that channel. It has nothing to do with that. Y'all know that. Uh, but there's some good work that goes over there by a, a great team of people. And uh, we've laid that out over there throughout our videos since the beginning. Uh, there are several videos and we lead up to, we lead, our research follows where the facts take us. Because that's how you figure something out. So we try to leave all our emotions at the door. Of course, it's hard with this, you know, case. Anytime you have horrible things going on, it's hard to, to do that. But you have to come in as unbiased as you can and look at the facts and, and go where the facts tell you to go. Uh, that's a question that I'll leave to you to do a little bit of research on. Some of our videos will explain on why. Uh, I won't answer that directly. I saw another chat in here that involved me answering a question, who is someone that may or may not hold a higher position in the local government. Uh, I'm not going to answer that for the same reasons. If you look at our videos and follow them and do your research on the path that we were doing, there is a very good chance that you will run into the very same thing that we did. And then you will see why I'm not willing to straight out come out and name someone. Missing baby out of Jefferson County, possibly headed to Corbin, Kentucky. When, when did that happen, uh, beloved ghost? Helen Tahira duality. Humankind has both characteristics, good and not good. In a sense, if you practice jhana yoga, which is the path of enlightenment through knowledge, through wisdom, uh, you might question that statement. Or you may not. Didn't even get an amber alert on my phone. Oh, wow. Okay. Mark Gorman, who is going to be the whistleblower and expose what's been found? Man, I'll tell you what, Mark. That is like the $10 million question right there, my friend. PJ's parlay, we have potentiality for both. Well, of course we do. Of course we do. But that's a <clears throat> that's a topic that would take a lot of refined attention and hours of teaching but at the same time depending on how your mind works and how you grasp things it can be taught in 
two minutes. Scott, can I ask why you won't speak on what's been found? MJ, yes, you can. Of course you can ask. And I will answer with you to you, and I'm, I'm not being a smart aleck, but if you follow our research over on True Crime Commentary, up to where it leads up to a local man describes as the title for the part three of our series, which is titled A Local Man Describes Summerwell's Hometown, uh, Genealogy and Family Ties, Money and Crime. If you go down the first part of that, the genealogy and family ties, you'll answer your own question. It's all public record. You'll find it. And then once you find that information, you can figure out what you want to do with it. We found that information and we figured out what we wanted to do with it. And that was to contact uh, the TBI headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. That 1-800-TBI find with any credible tips. MJ, you're welcome. And I hope you understand that I'm not trying to to be, you know, smart aleck or short with you or anything. It's just uh, there's a certain time and a certain place to share information with certain people. And then there's an inappropriate time to share certain things with certain people. My son, he just left. He had another article up. Um, I don't have it pulled up, so I can't share it with you. But it was, uh, let me find that. Angel P. Scott, you have quickly become my favorite channel. I'm very direct and appreciate your knowledge, integrity, and shooting it straight. Thank you, Angel P. Some people don't like that quality about me. But that's okay. Oh, Bloodhunter Scott, I have watched all the videos. Just bust it down or don't say it all. But for summer's sake, don't hide information. I'm not. Like I said, 1-800-TBI-FIND has all my information. Immediately when it was found, we as a research team got together and said, wow, what are we going to do with this? What do you think our avenues are? Who do we need to take this to? Is this something that we want to go any further with or do we need to put the brakes on it and our consensus among the group and the research team that was involved was to uh, turn it over to TBI headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. And that's where I'm going with it. Juji, thank you, Scott. The suspense is great. It keeps them coming back, or at least the ones that are truly interesting. I'm not doing this for, I know it's suspenseful, but I'm not doing it for uh, suspense. I'm doing it for people like I've, I've laid out the path. Penny has laid out the path. I've done it on this channel. We've done it on True Crime Commentary. We've laid the path out. Sh short of just sending you a text message of a screenshot of what we found for you to find the information. Now, if you don't want to go down and do the research and find that information, that's up to you. We did. 
We work tirelessly, hours and hours, and a lot of people, and tons of ink cartridges and printer paper, and flash drives, and so on and so forth. So if you want to go find the answer, we've laid the path out. It's right there. Go digging. Go digging. And if you come to where we found, and it doesn't slow you down and make you wonder what you should do with that information, dig on further and then you deal with it. That's all I can say. But I sure wasn't willing to. And we made that quite clear, 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 made that quite clear in our videos. Here's the point we're at. This is the reason why. Here's how we got there. Do this and you'll get there too. So really there is no suspense. We've already told you. And we're not going to tell any more than, than, than that. I'm not going to anyway. We also said on there that we'll discuss it. But we will not answer any more emails directly about it. And we meant it when we said it. Um, Scott and Penny, strong arms, loves, and I don't know if that's that emoji. I don't know if that's clapping or waving. I've never really figured that one out. Shelly Frill, I don't blame you. Thank you, ma'am, for understanding that. Hey, you're going to highlight my board tonight. Shelly Frill, I don't blame you. There you go. Got to have a little common sense sometimes. Do we know what cop brought Candace alcohol to their house? <laughs> That's a good question, Changes. Let me, let me talk to, let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. Do I have any proof that a cop did not bring Candace alcohol? No, I sure don't. But I can tell you one thing. Beach Creek is located in an area to where you just don't run right out to the store and get a bottle of alcohol. Beach Creek is a very rural place. There's no little quickie marts or 7-Elevens right on the corner. You got to drive a hell of a long ways to get to a corner. Or the cop himself just happened to have a, a bottle of alcohol with him. Is that a possibility? Yeah. Or he knew somewhere right there, one of their neighbors that sold unbonded liquor or was an alcoholic and had plenty of beer in his refrigerator or liquor or whatever and went and got a bottle from the neighbor. So, uh, who is that in big bold letters? JB Designs. I don't buy it, honestly. I don't either, honestly. I really don't. I really don't. Let's talk about it. Don said an officer brought Candace alcohol right out of his mouth. Don has said a lot of things out of his mouth. And the next day, sometimes within the same conversation, he will say something that directly contradicts what he previously said. So I'm not going to use Don as a very good reference source. I use Don to find out the contradictions in his words. Court clerk, that happens all the time. Pull up to a house and someone comes out with the overpriced pine. Oh, well, yeah, that does happen sometimes too. Yeah. I thought you were talking about that happens all the time about Don telling one thing and then 
another hey if we got a local here robin owens i've lived in the trial cities my whole 62 years and i can tell you scott penny Allie, and cam hang on just a second my scrolling thing's not working here for whatever reason are telling you exactly how things are it's getting worse by the day yeah, it's, a, it's nuts. It's crazy. It is. For instance, he just cussed Dave Rader out in a conversation with Cher and shook his hand on Thursday. And I understand you're right. Yep. Yep. And he also says he was talking about how they go to the bar and drink and go swimming. Well, you know, by golly, they could probably do that. I doubt they are. I really do. Because if you look at their credibility versus Don's, I'm probably going to side on the team of Equisearch versus Don. Uh, and if they did go to the bars and go swimming, what the hell does it matter? They're out there searching for his daughter for free, which is a hell of a lot more than he's done. They've got drones out there. They've had tons of people, boots on the ground. Who knows whatever other equipment. If they want to go swim in the lake after work or go to the bar and have a beer, knock yourself out. I don't think Don Wells has the damn right to police any volunteer organization. And if they're partying on their money that were donated to them, so be it. Yeah, let them deal with it. What we care about is finding Summer Wells. I'm not going to fuss if some, uh, somebody, I, you know, I, us and our whole research team, you know, work our hind ends off on this stuff till we look at computer screens till our eyes water so bad we can't see no more. And uh, do I hound one of them if they want to take a nap or do they hound me if I want to take a few hours off and go eat me a sandwich? No. Why? Because we're doing it voluntarily. I know this. If I ever had a child missing, I know if I had the choice to call Don Wells or Equisearch, Dave Rader, I know where my quarter in the payphone would go. That's for sure. Cops used to bring my dad confiscated moonshine when I was a kid. Dad would wait till the wait till the left the long drive and pour it out. And what was that now? Oh, dad would wait till they left the long driveway and pour it out. <laughs> okay, all right. I used to drink mine. I had to give that stuff up. Like to kill me. So what do you think about uh what do you think about Penny's video with True? The video of her messages with True, I should say. County clerk, I saw something on that on whether she knew her phone number and uh, address. Wait a minute. We've got Danny B is saying, I knew the cops gave them alcohol. Everyone thought I was crazy. If you can find me, uh, 
picture or a video clip of a police officer handing Candace a bottle, then we'll go from there. Don't know how credible, but eerie description of drugging Summer, Candace taking Summer to Dawn, dropping her off. Tiffany Marie has a live stream now. Yeah, that was uh, one of the theories that Penny was working on, on over at True Crime Commentary. Extremely interesting watch. See, we took a timeline based off of eyewitness accounts of where Don was on that day. And then we took people of our research team to actually drive those those in different routes themselves to see what the actual time frames were, not what Don was saying they were. Not what Google Maps saying they were. Was somebody actually behind the wheel of a car that we know that is not a proven criminal, alcoholic, drug addict, liar who beats the hell out of his wife and has been to jail the in and out the majority of his adult life? Not to count all the claims of uh, SA that he's facing. So there again, I'm going to trust the people on my research team far and above what I'm going to trust Don Wells. Now, based off of all that, we, uh, we got all the times and, uh, formulated a timeline that would fit with all that stuff. So Tiffany Marie may be talking about that over there. That timeline, I'm not sure. Scott, do you think Hawkins County is more worried about tourism? All I see is videos of things to do in Hawkins County. Well, there's not a whole lot to do in Hawkins County. I mean, I guess there's a few little things to do and stuff. They're, uh, they're working on right now. You can look it up. It's called, they're trying to rename our, and whoever the uh, local person from the Tri-Cities that's lived here 62 years, they'll be able to verify this for you. They're working on, we've been known as the Tri-Cities for years, and that's Kingsport, Johnson City, and Bristol. And they are trying to make our region more, I guess, sound better than the Tri-Cities for marketing reasons. So they're looking at renaming us the Appalachian Highlands in order to guacamole, there you go, guacamole, yep, Appalachian Highlands, yeah, to hopefully bring in more businesses that pay higher wages and employ more paper, people because poverty is uh, a factor around here. Homelessness is a factor around here. Lack of education is a, a uh, a factor around here so we can have good paying jobs that people that may not have a high education can be taught a skill and a trade so that they can go to work and earn a living to support their family to hopefully reduce some of this stuff in this region. And they're thinking they got a bunch of people with a whole lot of, and spent a damn whole lot of money on trying to figure out a name for what they're going to call us. True is a minor. I'm not going to release her age. She is a minor. She is a victim in all this too. She is a minor that experienced some horrific things and is getting her name bashed through this people making accusations that she had something to do 
with Summer's disappearance. This is a child we're talking about. Blank screen. I've seen you in other chats. Here's a warning. If you start that silliness, my mods are going to block you immediately. Period. If you start that silliness here, you are not welcome. No warnings. You just got your warning. So mods, watch him. You got free reign on him. Boot him. Her. Them. They. I had only heard her name one time until True Crime Commentary released her stream. Seriously. Well, there's a reason for that. She's a minor. Penny, bless her heart, is a very compassionate soul and has been checking up with True since July because she's seen how the internet works. True is a minor with access to the internet that has Facebook. She's in Summerwell's Facebook groups. You see it in her text with Penny. It was like her daughter. And they're bashing this poor little girl. True. Mods, here we go again. It goes the same way for Jeannie, for Mary, for Trish, for any SA apologist. You're gone. Done. Come in here with that. Well, that was 40 years ago when Dawn did that. She was five. He was 12. Ask him this question. Ask him this question. His daughter was five. Could she have initiated a sexual relationship with a man? Let's see what his answer is on that. Saying Jeannie initiated it at five years old. Say, well, so could Summer have initiated that with somebody? Come on, people. Nope. Hell no. You tell them, Scott. Uh, yeah, I will. Thank you, Scott, for keeping the integrity and focus on Summer's appearance. Absolutely. That's what this is about. Exactly. Much respect. Thank you. I'm not looking for that, but yeah, y'all get it. Y'all get it. Despicable behavior, indefensible. You're right. Don is sick. Yes, he is. Learn behavior. Yes, it is. He doesn't look at his daughter as, as a daughter. You're correct. Disgusting. You got it. This is about finding summer. You're right. What is wrong with people thinking a five-year-old could initiate something like that? You are awesome. No, you're awesome. You're, yeah, somebody should ask. Like, yeah, that's why I asked that question. Good question. We're going to put you on the screen. God, I hope someone asked him that. Well, if you're expecting the shares to... I'm not going to start bashing channels, but you know where he goes and hangs out. He's a sick son of a bitch. Yeah, he is. Both parents seem disgusting to me. Yeah, they sure do. Sick in the head. Damn right. 
There does not seem to be a parental attachment by either parent to Summer. You're right. They act like they lost a shoe. Not a daughter. I've seen more people cry over having to flush a goddamn goldfish down the toilet than I've seen them show for Summer. This is turning into a little longer stream than what I was figuring, but it we got on a good topic there. So I just saw somebody say thanks for doing this live. I was just going to do that little four-minute clip there, but watching me and my son talking, uh, I was a single dad and raised him up. I think I done an all right job. He's alive, so I did at least get enough there but he uh he come in and we got talking about this stuff and he started talking about some articles that he had read due to where he lives and then i was you know of course he grew up here at this house and we were talking about the cases you know that have happened around here so you know i got a little bit fired up before i came on here and then i get on here and I get talking to these beautiful people over here in this chat box on the side of my laptop. And I see how much you all care so much about summer. And then I get fired up even more. Because you guys are, you guys want to talk about it. And y'all want to fix it. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. Scott, do you think the, hang on, that was, could have been an interesting question that flew by there. Scott, do you think the TBI, FBI are building a case against a large pea ring? Hence, no arrests as of yet. Hippie Chick 74. I think you know what I think on that. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll allude to the video clip that I played at the beginning of this live stream. So, and like, you know, here are on this channel or on true crime commentary whenever i do something or ask something ask yourself why is he doing this or why is he saying it so why would i post a clip of something child sex trafficking being the second largest criminal industry in the nation being extremely bad in tennessee and it often happens in places of vulnerabilities, specifically Northeast Tennessee, where there's drug addiction, alcoholism problems, low education and poverty. So hippie chick 74. <laughs> that was a great question. Thank you for answering it or asking it. Sharon LaBelle, she is loved worldwide, yes. Elizabeth Samuels, you are a recovering Catholic, beat by nuns, yep. Yeah. I raised mine by myself too, whatever it took to get them away from the evil. Everts, oh wow. Summer is going to move mountains. Fur baby, she already has. Just imagine what that girl is going to do. My goodness. My goodness. I wish I could show Summer what love and guidance looks like. Y'all, y'all, Kelly. My chat counter is showing we got 448 people watching right now so i would make 449 that would probably agree with you wholeheartedly 
there's probably not a person in this room right now that would not love to take that little baby girl's hand and show her what loving and caring and a family looks like, what a home-cooked meal looks like, what a clean bed looks like, what clean clothes looks like. Misha Dawn, they found her. And magically, they had an epiphany to find, uh, go get a man named Donnie Lawson. And he, uh, the Lord told him where she was at. Donnie Lawson, Ronnie Lawson, Bobby Lawson, Larry Lawson. There's just some names you can look up. And see what she finds. <laughs> for summer I love that I think all hell's getting ready to bust open yeah yeah find summer moon bring summer home justice for Jeannie you got it we Scottish ma I believe nature is God nature always reveals Elizabeth Samuels Let's see. Scott, do you know if it's true that shares new dawn before summer went missing? Uh, duality, reality. Uh, my name would be non duality, reality, but <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I heard that. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I've been I've been looking at some other stuff. And uh, I just haven't, I can't honestly give you an answer to that. So, no, I do not know. That's not saying, yes, she did or no, she didn't. I'm just saying I do not know. I'll be honest with y'all folks if I don't know something. And that I just don't know. I've heard it, uh, but I haven't researched it. So, I can't, I would have to say, no, I don't know. Y'all, y'all, Kelly set to surpass drug trafficking. Yeah. Wasn't that article, that little news article I pulled up by our local news something? Those are super nice people, too. They, uh, I've emailed them and stuff, and they've always got back to me. And the one lady there, the main lady that's standing there with the, the man, she does a thing. It's called uh, Trail Time with Sydney or something like that where she goes hiking on a bunch of local trails and does a lot of local activities and stuff. She's really neat, cool person to talk to. Like I said, I used to volunteer for the Appalachian trail. So she, uh, you know, she does a lot of stuff on the trail there. So we've talked back and forth about that. Changes, I never realized how bad traffickers are in Tennessee. That's why, again, I wanted to play, play that clip today. Just to bring it up to the, keep it, keep it in the forefront. We've brought it to the forefront. Let's keep it. Uh, Connie, I read where trafficking will pass drugs, yeah. Oh, gosh, Sean blew the Franklin cover up. Now, that's a whole nother topic. You're not kidding. PJ's parlay. Scott H is a teacher. He asks questions to focus our attention on something. Now, I've been told that I should have been a teacher or a preacher. So, but yes, I do ask questions to focus your attention on something. You are exactly right.
Indiana K, we will not rest until summer is found. I know you were busy the past couple of days, uh, Indiana K, but I hope, uh, happy birthday to your, your daughter, and I hope y'all had a good time. Those uh, nachos and uh, your margarita looked wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the time with your family. Let's see here. I, Punky Juarez. I'm glad I came across that website because it lets you know what vehicles to look for and red flags to look for. Very informative and eye opening. Yeah. Chasing Truth mentioned you, Scott, in her live a few minutes ago. Yeah, it changes. She did. Uh, we were, I was chatting as much as I could with her in there, but she had the chat delay on. So it was like, you know, you post a message and then, good gosh, you got to wait, you know, for a while before you can post another one. So it's, I mean, I know why you slow the chat down and stuff, but. Sometimes it, it is hard to carry on a conversation back and forth with somebody. Just doing me 453. Oh, my chats. How many people are watching? Cool. Bring summer home. Absolutely. Wow. I got way behind on the chat here. Luca Vega's on, got her hearts on fire and prayer hands up. Justice Janney, amen. Uh, Justice Janney, I've seen her a lot in chats. Uh, I know she's, I think she may actually be local here. Or was local at one point. I'm pretty sure. I know we've chatted a lot in the chat. So glad to have you here, Justice Janney. Donnie lost an unusual demeanor in Trent case. You ain't kidding, Susan Brewer. Kelly Fustos is on fire, Tennessee girl. I've been in and out. Great stream, Scott. Tennessee girl, I'm thinking you're the Tennessee girl I was just chatting to earlier. Probably. If so, hello, hello. What do you think at Scott H? Well, I don't know. That's probably a question that you ask, and I scroll by it, so I apologize. Are Donnie and Lonnie brothers? Well, it's Ronnie. And then there's a Bobby and a Larry. I'm not sure if I've ran across a Lonnie yet. But you need to look at that, Don. Sensitive, sensitive subject there. Somebody's thinking something is bunk. And they don't believe it. I don't know what that was. A conversation between you guys or something that could be. Scott, do we know if the dogs check grandma's car? You know, I don't know that, Nat Man. I would love to know that. I would. Sandy S., new subscriber, thank you. Nurse Rojo, I left a reply to a comment. Yeah, I know. I know, Nurse Rojo. I know. I saw something about that. Uh, I've got plat maps coming. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh gosh, that's horrible, Susan Brewer, but you're right. Humans are a reusable commodity. Yes, they are. Rocking X. Oh, that's something. Okay. Yeah, Cooley, Kelly Fustos, search trucking and child trafficking. Yes, ma'am. We'll see that on video, uh, 
something about that on Penny's videos. Tennessee girl, bring Summer home. Yes, ma'am. Let's let's do that. Let's do it together. Golly, I got way behind on chat. I got yakking away. Chasing truth is amazing. Bless her husband, Scott. Yeah, she is amazing. We've got a little joke going on. We've got Scott, and he said there can only be one Scott in chat one night, and Chasing was joking around, and she told me, she said, you want to be my husband, Scott H.? She said, you can be. She said, just sit in the corner, don't type on your computer, and shut the hell up. And I was like... That suits me. That's the perfect kind of relationship right there. So we have a little uh, inside joke going on that I'm Polly Scott, polyamorous Scott, and then Scott C, her real husband. So, But yeah, chasing truth is fun. She's off-putting to some people. Uh, to my subs here, in case y'all didn't see it, and this is why I like Chasing Truth. We do disagree. We do. Uh, but she left a comment on one of those videos where I don't know if some of you all went over and made comments on her page. Please don't do that. But she made a personal apology to me and all of our subscribers. It was over on the True uh, Crime Commentary channel that she apologized if she offended any of our subscribers, that she apologized to us and to you all. Uh, I don't know what all was going on with that, you know, but yes, that's you, Tennessee girl. Okay. I'm just getting through all these chats here. I'm scrolling kind of fast now, so hopefully I won't. I'm just trying to get caught up on my own chat. How's that? It's funny. I love chasing. She's genuine and quick to correct mistakes. LM, LM, yeah. Yeah. I've seen her do that uh, a lot. And like I said, you know, we disagree on stuff. And she actually said in her, her chat today, uh, she's willing to evolve her thoughts because she said she started you know, slowly starting to look the other way, you know, looking at Don as the way she was looking at him as a group of certain type of people to, well, maybe he may be a different one. Those are my words. Those are Tracy's or chasing truths. Those are hers. Chasing and I have similar personalities, except in I'm an old grandma, granny ma. Okay. Yes, indeed, about chasing truth. She's off-putting since when? She's one of the only... Well, some people think that, huh, on lullabies. But I don't know. She's always been respectful to me. And that's what I've got to look at. And then for her, you know, like I said, I don't even know what went on. But she made a personal comment. She made a point to make a personal comment apologizing to me and Penny and any of my subscribers that she may have offended. Now, to me, that's character. And that's one of the reasons I like her. We may disagree, but we treat each other with mutual respect. And respect each other's subscribers, you know. There's a, you know, so, you know, I don't have anything against her. Like I said, I was over there watching her today. Good grief, you know. You think I'm going to go over to somebody's 
channel and watch something that I don't like? No, not hardly. And I think it's good if you if, if you listen to somebody that has an opposing view, but yet you can still hold a level of respect for. Now, like another channel that we know all know the behind the the ones behind the drywall. That's a whole different story, you know. Two, they're on two different levels. Even though they somewhat seem to, you know, have had similar opinions on some things, and you know, but you know, hey, there, that's uh, that's okay. They can have opinions, and I can have mine, and you can have yours, and we can all choose to be adults about having them. Sandy, yes, everyone should respect each other. Yes. Let me highlight you. Boom. Everybody look at that right there before we go out into internet world. Two different moral standards between chasing truth and the ones behind the drywall. Yeah, there are. Definitely. Shay Dot Chasing has a pretty big following, and I bet over half have a different view. Whoops, you're. But she's fair and it works, yeah. But some people are put off by her, you know, her being from Boston and, and stuff like that. And, you know, it's okay. Be nice, Scott. Mojo Joe, am I being mean? Oh, you chase St. Elmo's fire. You thought I were, I was chasing Scott. No, no, I'm not. Not in real life. Just internet wise. Hey, I just saw Carol Johnson. Hello. T. Marie, I would imagine most folks' families in Ten Tennessee have been there for generations. So it's not, you know, unusual that they are all most likely related in some way, either biologically or through marriage. In certain areas, yes, T. Marie, because we have such large uh, land masses but small populations. So that's just a natural result. You know, if you don't have that many people in a population, then, you know. All right, it's 7.39. I'm trying to keep my eye a little bit on the clock. You all want me to talk a little bit more? Are you all ready to go or whatever? I know Chris comes on at 8 and everybody's going to want to watch him. I want to go over and watch him too because that's what we were talking about. His title of his video, if it turns out to be about that, you know, he's, he'll swap them up on us sometimes. He loves poking Don in the ribs. Uh Oh, Lord. Vegas and Bama on YouTube. There's a documentary called Boys for Sale. Watch if you have the stomach for it. Oh, goodness. Whoa. Randy Bradford. Yes, I have a reminder set. I do too, Randy. I do. And, I, you know, that was great, you know, Chris popping in the other day and and then, you know, accepting my invite to, or our invite, however, mine, Penny's, John QQ's, 
our invite collectively for him to join us on panel. Scott, don't you think Summer Moon is a totally unusual name choice in a world full of Candace's roses? Thank goodness. <laughs> There's so many Dons and Candaces in this story, and then you throw in a few roses and a couple of Andrews, and good grief. You really got to be on top of stuff. Justice Janney, Chris, and family. Yeah. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people, you know, and I'm not, I'm not taking up for Chris because Chris can take up for himself and he has, you know, I've been, uh, I've been accused of stuff in my short little time here on YouTube and I've, had to prove myself that I was right. And, you know, Chris, the ever people, I, I see it in my comments, on, especially on that video there, since he joined us on panel comments on there about, you know, he was going back to that case. He even discussed that case on panel and people still had to put comments about that case, even though he explained it on that panel, that I need to go look at that and then see what Chris is really like. I've seen what Chris is really like. I have. And for whatever he was went on with that case, they got it all straightened out through the court system. That's the way America works. It's called the Constitution. Deal with it. We're coming on my chat and fussing about it go to his chat and fuss to him about it you're wasting your time there because he's already been cleared of anything that's supposedly wrongdoing that he did come on get over it people guacamole yeah he's being attacked because he he is hitting a nerve i put in my private discord group in our research group the other day I put a message to everyone. To, to, it tagged everyone. You know, the old saying, you, you know, you're getting close when you're over the target. That's when we were starting to have higher ups come into the chat and stuff. So, you know, by golly, somebody's got to be listening. Yeah. Yeah. Punky Juarez, what do you think about that? Listen to this, folks. See, this is stuff I was finding out here. And you'll find it, too, if you go look. But since they mentioned it on here, I can discuss it. Punky Juarez says, let me just pop it up here for people so they can take notes on Punky here, what Punky's saying, sharing with us. You know, Punky, I'm trying. I have an account through my heritage. Okay, that's good. That's showing that Punky Juarez does some research on their own. And a lot of the Lawsons and Wells. So he's looking at two specific families and their genealogies. That's good. So that he's putting or they are putting their research site, my heritage, to work for them. And by doing that, he found out that a lot of the Lawsons and the Wells are private. Hmm. Really? Yeah. How did he find that out? Well, he did research to a research site. And guess what? It was so frustrating to, to them. Now, you ain't kidding about it being frustrating. Now, why is that? Ask your question. Why? are all those private? Why can't you find nothing about it? Why are records scrubbed? Why? Why? And then I got another question for you, Punky Juarez. When? And then I got another one. Elodia. That's pretty. Elodia, I've got another question. Why are they scrubbed? When did they get scrubbed? And who authorized them to be scrubbed? 
Huh? Huh? You're a she, Elodia. I'm sorry. Um, okay, a she, that's good. Ma'am, I'll call you ma'am from now on if I can remember. Yeah, uh, Kelly. Child trafficking also operates online. People behind personas. Do you notice how quick Don Wells was to volunteer to be one of them people? In one of his interviews there. And the hairs, yeah. Elodia, you're right. It's frustrating, buddy. I tell I tell you what. Question mark, exclamation point. I'm a little behind, but I know she's doing that probably because I was asking those questions. Why are they scrubbed? When did they scrub on before or after Summer's disappearance and who authorized it? Hey, Scott, the Wells don't even have their names on the vehicle. Well, we actually found that out. We got the VIN number off of it and the tag number, and we ran them separately, and they both match so that the tag matched the VIN number, the VIN number matched to the tag, and it was registered in Don Wells' name. So we did find that out. On True Crime Commentary, uh, Penny put out a very short video uh, on that that shows the, the screenshots of the documentation of the VIN number and the tag and where they match and uh, the make and model of the, of the car, of the Subaru. Melissa Hart, welcome. Can you share the research site so we can help? Well, we're very, very tight circle. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, some of us, that's why you'll probably never see our actual faces. Anonymity in some cases is, you know, a blessing. You got to remember where we live. So we, uh, we keep the, our research site pretty close. It's nothing personal. Uh, we do have a website or a email. You can email us stuff. And that would be true crime commentary. The number four. Y-O-U at gmail.com. Christy H. says, just research, you will find your way. Yeah, Christy, that's, uh, some people do that. Mojo Joe, it's a paid site. Some of those sites are paid. You know, capitalism is a funny thing. Provide a product. You take the risks and the investment for producing or providing the product. Consumer purchases it. You make a certain amount of money from that. So that's the way capitalism works. This country was built off of it. Capitalism has brought more people out of poverty than any other system in the world. Above socialism and communism. Check it out. Mao in China, Lenin and Stalin in Russia. Hitler in Germany, Castro in Cuba. Venezuela. Guacamole, I have an ancestry account. I have some research to do. One of our uh, people in our research team, they use uh, ancestry. And we get some really, really good Solid information. That was asked earlier. This is the break. This this the breaks. 
Good evening. Question. When Summer went missing, did a forensic team check the cars for evidence? Uh, we would all like to assume that that would be standard, normal operating procedure for that to happen. But as you know, there hasn't been any press release or anything. But yes, we would all like to hope that that would be just common. Polygraph. If Chris only did one thing wrong in his entire career, that's not bad for a record. Well, I can tell you right now, Polygraph, I've done a whole lot more than one thing wrong in my life. I sure have. I sure have. I don't think there's none of us here that, you know, would probably want our closest neighbor to come in and look in our closets, the closets of our minds, and find out the things that we've done wrong. Hell, most of our family don't even know the worst stuff that we did. Let's see, I saw a question there. Would L.E. scrub right field? Would L.E. scrub under current conditions? Oh, I don't know. That's a, you've had a lot of bang up questions in here. I'm going to put you up there for a minute. Uh, come on. I want to show you. But boom. Fantastic question. That email, Julia Beck, if you want to correct it, it's true co crime commentary, two M's in commentary, the number four, Y-O-U, at gmail.com. Oh, Elodia, wow. Wow. That is very interesting. Yeah. People all across this country. I've talked to people in South Africa and Canada, the UK. All across the United States. Uh, it's been fascinating for sure. People are all over the world are looking at this little girl. Yeah, our secret life, as Chris McDonald says, you got it, you got it, you got it. I was, that that process that he was talking about, it was described to me in a different way, but basically that's the, the gist of it. He just describes it as the, the public, the private, and the secret, but if that goes back to a lot of... Uh, I think it was, I can't remember if it was Sigmund Freud or Carl Jung. Uh, that came up with those three. I'm thinking that it was Sigmund Freud. But Jung studied under Sigmund Freud, so I can't remember which one. Yeah, crowdsource illumination, Jung and Freud, yes, exactly. Those are some interesting cats to listen to. All right. Well, uh, there you go, Julia Beck. True crime commentary for... Well, shoot. It's two M's as in Mary instead of ends as in Nancy. I'm sorry. I apologize. 
They both built off that premise, yes. Crowdsource eliminations. Almost time for the interview room. Yeah, it is. For summer, see you, Scott. Okay, summer, I'll see you. Yeah, let's go ahead at 7.56. That gives us all about four minutes. And uh, we can all go get us something to drink or a snack or whatever we need to do uh, before Chris starts. And uh, depending, I might come back on uh, later or I might just have to digest again, uh, you know, what Chris goes over and see if that's something that I want to go on here with or if me and Penny want to go live or if we just want to think on it for a couple of days and everything. But uh, thank you, everybody. I really, really appreciate you. Uh, I'm glad you came over, uh, found my channel. I'm glad you support me in, in having a separate channel here. Uh, again, I'm not leaving true crime commentary. That rumor is out there that me and Penny are at odds with each other. We're not. Uh, but we'll see you all uh, next time. And uh, justice for summer.